I was sitting there, and out of nowhere, the scene of Eddie and the Cruisers 2 hits me, where you got, uh, you know, the older seasoned player that's out in hiding, doing the jam session with the young gun, who's just trying to impress him. And uh, I immediately came downstairs, and I was like, okay, I hope this is on YouTube. And I, and I looked it up, and it's on YouTube, and I happened to find one that's like widescreen HD. Someone must have done it. And I haven't even rewatched it yet. But this was one of my favorite movies as a child, and it's one of my dad's favorite movies. Um, and what I remember most about this scene is, one, it being overly dramatic, but two, how much my dad loved this scene, and he's not a musician. And so the scene is obviously, for those of you that have seen it, but it's not going to spoil it for those of you that haven't. Again, it's two guitar players. It's the young guy trying to teach, or sorry, the old guy trying to teach the young guy, you know, what music's all about. That it's not all about flair and showing off and like that's the easy thing, right? That's, anybody can do that. It's, you know, can you make something that gets stuck in people's head? You know, can it, can it breathe? You know, is it alive? Um, and, uh, I just, it always struck me that that was always like my dad's favorite scene in the movie too, because he's not a musician. So the question is, what is it about, um, let's, for lack of a better, better word, because we'll watch the clip and then I'll have a better, more have a better words. Uh, what is it about simple, um, phrasing and playing versus the show off stuff, um, that non-musicians, uh, you know, get off on? you know, that, that they connect with, you know, what is it about that style, that way of approaching the instrument, um, that gets non-musicians to listen, right? Because I feel like the more advanced we get, the more better we get at playing complicated stuff, the more we swerve ourselves towards music for musicians, not music for everyone, you know? There's something about whether it's, the same thing's true in writing or any other medium, right? The, the, the doing things right simply, or uh, doing things simply but really well done, connects with everyone, or should I say more people, than complex things. Just in generally, that's true. Um, and not even in art form. Like, what's that, uh, what is it, like a, the Occam's razor? The, um, the simplest answer is usually the true one. It's just true in life. Um, I hope that's Occam's razor. I just pulled that out there. Regardless, you get the idea that it's not just a music thing. It's not just an art thing. It's a, it's a physics global. It's, it's just, it's just what's real. So let's watch this clip together and let's see if it's how I remember it. I do remember them smoking the whole time in the studio like you used to. Six, four, five. <laughs> Puts the guitar down. <laughs> Pulls the cigarette out. <laughs> Smokes at him. He's got the unlit smoke. He's just waiting for it. Oh, I know this is a movie and it's meant to be dramatic, but like, <laughs> that's hilarious. Not bad. Not bad? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Not bad means not bad. <coughs> and I suppose thanks for nothing means thanks for nothing, right? Listen, if I was in a bar and I heard you play, it'd lit. be nice being in there. Then I'd go home and I'd forget all about it. <laughs> That's what not bad means. It's freaking brutal, but true. <laughs> if I was in a bar, it'd be nice being there. But then I'd get, I'd go home and I'd forget all about it. That's what not bad means. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Hey, you don't want the truth? Don't ask. Make up your own. You don't I'll give want everybody the... else. Look, man, I want to. 
You don't want the truth, don't ask. Make up your own like everybody else. Freaking killer. Learn, is that okay? You ain't gonna learn nothing by impressing yourself with some five minute guitar riff. I mean, it was good, it would dazzle an audience, but that's the easy part. Okay, okay hold on a second, Hotshot. Well, why don't you show me something I don't know? What's great about this scene is that, it, well, there's so many good parts to this movie, but what's great about this scene is that he's upset, right? But at the same time, he is committed to being better. So he wants to know. He doesn't immediately just go, get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, F you. Like, I don't want you in the band. I don't want to know you. Like, you're, you're such an ass. Like, that's not what he does. You know, he's aggressive and defensive. But at the same time, he wants him to stay and show him. Not because he's going to fall on his face, but because he knows he's right. It's, the, it's, 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 it's one of those things. Like, when I went to GIT, there were tons of moments, you know, where I got my ass handed to me. But and as much as you want to, like, just throw the guitar down and never pick it up again, you wake up the next day, you dust yourself off, and you go back in there, right? It doesn't matter if it happens in a bar or in a club or in school or whatever. It's that dedication to getting better. I love that. And because he sees that, right, because he sees that, he chooses to play. Look, he's what? Music's gotta live, man. It's gotta breathe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, where's the last part? It's gotta Sorry, breathe. Well, how the hell am I supposed to do that? Practice. <laughs> it's such a great movie. But, you know, I tell you what, we're gonna listen through and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to figure out some of these parts. But but the idea is that you have the flashy stuff, the speed, the stuff that clearly is incredibly complicated and difficult, especially to the non-musician, right? So the dude's gonna go home, he's gonna say, man, that guitar player, he was he was a killer guitar player, um, but then he's gonna forget about it, right? He's just like, oh yeah, that guy's a good guitar player. Um, but like, his thing, what he plays, the guy's gonna go home in his car, and the whole time he's gonna be like, ba 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 That's the key. It's the earworm. And I tell all my students, you guys know if you've been watching me for a while, every song you learn, learn the melody. You're playing with a band you're not used to playing with, play the melody. If you don't know the melody, play something that connects the freaking chords with like three or four notes. Make up a melody, right? Start there and then expand. Um, there's just so many nuggets of wisdom in this movie. I, I love this. Let's go back and let's, let's figure out exactly what, what we have going on here. So we're in D here, right? So I hear like that, it's got the 80s effects, you know, it's, it's the whole thing. But it's like dumping the whammy bar on G, coming up on your root on D. <laughs> right? sharp G but it's a sequence down in D I and mean, we're not gonna get all this note for note that it's not even really my style of playing anyway but it's you're just you're muscling through the scales with a lot of pyrotechnics basically um, hitting the changes great playing you, you can't watch the dude's fingers because you know they're not playing with it you know what I mean so like this is 
It'll screw you up if you watch. You gotta just listen. But you're hearing him hit all the changes. It's killer playing. Um, but you could tell the director was like, all right, first time through, first time through, way overdo it. Second time through, way underdo it. I'm, I'm assuming it's the same guitar player. It seems like it. I mean, that's that's really strong guitar playing. Like, look how proud of himself he is. Um, but like you can like 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 you can like he tells him after this in this scene, I can't, with the exception of the very intro dive bomb where it goes to the D. That I'm sitting here trying to think, and maybe that's sequencing. Maybe just because it's the second thing, but. I'm not hearing any of that in my head right now. And that's kind of the point he's trying to make, is that you're in the bar, you're in there, yeah, it'd be nice. Then I go home and I forget all about it. I've kind of already forgotten it, right? Now let's watch what the other dude does. And you're going to tell that, again, you can't watch his hands, that if you were in the bar and, and this song kind of hits you, you would, like, right now I can hear it. I already got it. Let's let, let's get at least those first few notes there. So we're coming in on D. So this is a melody based off the fifth. So so A uh, uh sorry A B A so. Fifth of D, major sixth, back to the fifth. To the root of the B, so it goes over the B, the sixth chord, so. I'm just walking straight up the scale in key of D major. But then it goes, and then it, I'm figure out where it goes down. So it's walking down that flat three two root of the B chord. So right away, I know. Like that's already stuck in my head. So then it goes. Was that it? Does it end on that E? Right. So this is when we're over uh, the G chord, right? So this is interesting. So here's over the G. So. So that melody is over the major sixth of G, right? So this is what we're really doing here is we're switching, like we're in D major, but the melody really, the way you think about it, is hanging on the nine, the two of D. So we're still in D major, but it's just hanging here to kind of add that tension to the D, but you're not playing a chord tone of G, which is interesting. Now you're playing a chord tone of A, which it's about to go to, the fifth of that, so it pulls towards that a little bit, but it really, it, this is a, a choice you make as a lead guitar player to play more key-centered, uh, more or less, versus chord scale or chord tone. So these two come in, right, very chord tone, then... Uh, 
then, it's, then it goes. Oh, where's it go from here? And then it slides back up to the major third of D, and and it finishes the same way it starts on that fifth of uh, D, which is A, and we're over the A chord now. And so I'm not going to go through the whole rest of that, but the point I'm trying to make is, is that melody could be anything. But I'm sitting here right now imagining, like he said, being in the bar and then being in the car and then going home. The first lead is masterful playing, right? It sounds great. Forget the whole cinematic video nonsense of it, right? But just think about it right now. Seriously. Can you hear it in your head? I can't. I hear that... That sequence, that one part. Like, I know there was a fast run. And since I'm a guitar player, I know that it was a sequence, right? But I'm not hearing it. So a non-musician isn't going to. But sitting here right right now, and I listen and I think about what the second lead was. Right? I mean, you can see how that would get stuck in your head on the way home. You can see how that would be a melody of the of the tune. People would be singing it. You can see how a non-musician would get that their earworm. That's the point of this scene. That's what he's trying to tell him. It's not that one style of playing is better than the other, that you can't ever play fast and you can't ever do that. But what he's saying, that that was pretty good or whatever the language he used, was exactly what he said. I'd be in there. I'd be having a good time. You'd know you were a great player. But then I'd be home and forget all about it. That's what pretty good means, right? A really, in my opinion, as a musician, what I strive to do is break down the essence of tunes, what makes the song what it is, into its simplest form. How do I communicate that for the broadest acceptance of all types of listeners, right? How do I get the message of the song that the writer of the song crafted? How do I get that into the listener's ear? Um, and more often than not, that's the melody. Especially if you're in cover bands, you play a lot of great songs. You'll notice that they're great because there are great melodies that connect great chord progressions. And so learning every melody of every song that you're going to play and getting in the habit of soloing, starting with melodies and then going off and coming back, you know, playing against it or with it or whatever. <clears throat> Developing that as a musician is something we... I think can all learn, we should learn to do, we can learn from, um, because you're not taking away from when it's time to go bananas and drop dive bombs on everybody, because there absolutely is a time and a place for that. We all look forward to that time and that place. But make sure you're in everybody's ear, in their head, when they're in the car on the way home, when they're in the shower, they wake up the next morning, and that's why it's my dad's favorite scene in the movie, right? Because he's a non-musician, and it's stuck in his head. That's why he gets it. That's why that scene makes sense, because it's simple. People understand simple. It sticks with them, because more often than not, simple is what works. Good luck. See you in the next one.